Hey, hey, what's up? It's Jeremy here. Sorry if you hear some rain because it's actually raining outside. So just ignore that. If you hear it, I'd probably cut it out anyway. But I'm going to show you how to create this cool design, logo design for a tourist company. And I was doing a quick competition just for fun. Um, it was uh, in one of our Facebook groups, logo design groups, and we had to do a design based on a, a tourism and like a nightlife and you know there's casinos and food and all that type of stuff so came out with this ID and you can see he did a few versions and I'm going to show you how to design in this tutorial today so cool let's get stuck into it so the first process that I did I'm just going to turn off my artboards and just so it's all white and you can do that by going to if you go to view and you can go um, hide artboards if you see here it says show artboards because I just turned it on but if you click that then it will change it so it's all white um, which I just like that's just how I like to work now and what I did so first of what what you should do is get a bunch of different fonts if you don't have any paid fonts you know look for free fonts and what I was trying to look for it's a bit more it's a bit sophisticated but also playful not too upper class so I try to look at both sans serif and serif fonts so you can see here I got a couple here um, this is Andy's new, this is Tomkin, um, that one is two of a slab. We've got Hazelnuts, Connect, Font, and I thought this was a bit too simple and plain for the actual vibe I wanted to go for, so I wanted more of a um, serif font. So I just picked a few fonts here, um, as you can see, um, Butler is pretty nice, um, Eloquent J Pro, Made Ken Fog. And Ultra, this is a bit too thick. I decided to go for uh, Made Ken Fog. It's got some nice um, little accents there, as you can see. And nice descenders and ascenders. And it's really clean. I like that K as well. And it's had good vibes. So it had both that, you know, sophisticated, but not too, not too crazy. So then what I did, I just, you know, played around with different layouts. So typically what I do is I, I'll grab the font that I want. And you can see I've already typed out the name, but usually, you know, you just type out the name, type it in, I'll do lowercase. A quick way to change it is, I'm just gonna duplicate this really quickly. You can go to type and go to change case and click uppercase. So you don't have to constantly retype the name of the brand or the, or the, or the company. And I can also change it, I can do title case. So it's just really simple. And what I'll do, I select it, I press hold alt or option if you're on a Mac and you can bump up the kerning and I'm just playing around with different um, versions of it. So I'll bump the kerning down so you can see holding alt or option and tapping the arrow keys on your keyboard. So I'm just playing around with that and just really seeing what it looks like. And you can press tab to get rid of your toolbars, which I like. So I can just see what I'm working on. So you can see here, I start to get a feel, start to get a vibe. Um, I don't want to bump up the kerning too much. So I want to kind of keep the spacing balanced, <coughs> which is what I did here. And then what I did is added the city or the place that I was actually in. So I just, it's hypothetical. So I just put Melbourne there. Um, it's not actually like a real place, but if it was, then, you know, I'll just think of Melbourne. So I came up with this lockup. With a Melbourne font, I used Connect, which is a serif font. It's got a lot of different weights, as you can see there. And I didn't want it to go too thin, so I, p I picked semi-bold. Um, but you can see it's still a bit thick, so you could even go down to medium or regular. So I think medium is nice, and I bring this up like that. So I currently like this lock up here. That's looking really nice, looking clean. And then I went to work on the icon. So to create this logo, as you can see here, this icon mark, this logo mark, what I did is I created four circles like this. So you press L for the ellipse tool and I want you to just hold shift and alt to keep the proportions and just drag it up. And my smart guide's on and what I do, you hold alt and shift and drag it across until it clicks on that anchor point there. And I'll do that a couple times. And you can see we get this shape. And then from that shape, what we can actually do is I'm gonna create a circle. Press Control G to group these circles together. I'm gonna duplicate it and just bring it to the center of the circle. So we wanna find the center there, as you can see. 
And I'm gonna scale it across so it's not meeting the circle. So I'm just gonna drag it across, holding shift so it keeps the proportions. So now we have these four circles in the actual circle. I'm gonna bring it to the front by pressing Control shift right square bracket. And you can see that we've got the first four circles there. Cool. So what I, and from now what we wanna do, we wanna create the like crown shape with the stars in the moon type of vibe. So what I wanna do is I wanna, this section up here, I can, I can select it all and I can actually press shift M for the shape builder tool and left click and minus this section off like that. I can also minus those bits off. So we have this core layer, which is looks like a lake. As you can see, it looks like waves, which is pretty interesting. And now to get this effect here, what we can actually do is press M for the rectangle tool. Hold shift to scale it. And what I'm gonna do, I want that diamond shape. So I'm gonna go to the corner, hold it and bring it across like this, holding shift. And what I'm gonna do is, see my smart guides are turned on. I'm gonna find the center, as you can see. I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift, duplicate that. Across. And you can see if it's not lining up, what you can do is find the point. Left click and just make it. And if I just change the color there. So you can see now I can connect it to this path. So now I know that it's like directly aligned and I'll do the same for this. Snap it there, bring this across, delete those two strokes. And then I will just duplicate this middle one and bring that up. And you can see the spacing there works really well. So cool. We have our logo mark, our icon, and I'll take our word mark and I'll place it. I like <coughs> placing it in the center, as you can see there. And now what I want to do is I'm going to press M for the rectangle tool and drag out a box. If you want to do it for Instagram sizing, you can just do a thousand by a thousand pixels, which you can change up the top corner there. So I mean, when you save it out, you can, you know, do that, put on Instagram. So I want to group these all together, as you can see. And now I'll go to my Pathfinder tool and I'll go to my shape mode and just unite them using the first button. So now it's all one shape. And what I want to do is I don't necessarily want it to be directly um, aligned, but optically I'll use my eyes to, you know, test it out. And you can see that the crown lake is a very, it's a long word. So you need to see how that's going to work. We also want to give some extra space to the actual icon and we don't want to make it too big like that. So now I've gotten some color palettes from Adobe Color, as you can see here, um, that I've added them in. So if I just put them here. So because it's like nightlife and, you know, it's it's not too playful, um, I wanted to keep the colors like uh, monochromatic here with some blues and a nice like neon purple as well, which I can use. So I'll make the background dark because we want that contrast. We want it to stand out. I'll select the logo and it's all grouped together. I drag it out. And what I want to do is I want to actually, you see how it's still, the font is still live. What I want to do is actually create outlines. So I'll go to type, create outlines, and that should turn it all into one shape as you can see there. Now what I'm going to do is use my direct selection tool to select certain parts of the logo. And I'm going to start to color it. So this one, we can actually go for the purple look or we can go all blue or I can play around. Maybe I want to do it like this or with a purple. So there's different type of variations I can do. I've got some other colors here, um, which is like a backup color. I've got this nice little orangey color, which is kind of cool and sweet. And then what I'll do, I'll I'll unlock the bottom, the back bit, and I'll do another version. So what I'll do, I'll just ungroup everything, make sure that it's ungrouped. I'll bring this across. I can probably delete Melbourne for this one. And I'll do a version where it's just the vertical and the it's just the main um, name. Make sure there's some space there. 
And maybe I want to do it like the color. Make it something different. As you can see there. And there we have it. That's how you create a logo for a tourist destination, tourist place. And hope you guys like it. You can see you got the crown. It's like um, using the white space. You can see that crown with the, the diamonds and the lake there, which is kind of nice. Um, not too literal. But, but yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Hit subscribe to get some more design tutorials every week. And hit that bell button to get notifications when I release new content. Really appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and I'll catch you in the next video.